Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you. 
Oh my God, by the hand of Moses, your servant, you led your people out of slavery and made them free at last. Grant that your church, following the example of your prophet, Martin Luther King, may resist oppression in the name of your love and may secure for all your children the blessed liberty of the gospel of Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. After her, your turn. Ready? Ready? A reading from Genesis. Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They since, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him and we shall see what will become of his dreams word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will remember the works of the Lord and call to mind your wonders of old time. I will meditate on all your acts and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O oh God, is holy. Who is so great a God as our God? <laughs> You are the God who works wonders and have declared your power among the peoples. By your strength, you have redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and trembled. The very depths were shaken. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Your arrows flashed to and fro. The sound of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea and your paths in the great waters, yet your footsteps were not seen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. The epistle from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his power. Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For our struggle is not against enemies of blood and flesh, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand therefore and fasten the belt of truth around your waist and put on the breastplate of righteousness. As shoes for your feet, put on whatever will make you ready to proclaim the gospel of peace. With all of these, Take the shield of faith, for with which you will be able to quench all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Pray in the spirit at all times in every prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert and always persevere in supplication for all the saints. Pray also for me, so that when I speak, a message may be given to me to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it boldly, as I must speak. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again, but love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great and you will be children of the most high for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. The gospel of the Lord, praise to you, Lord Christ. I am glad to have with us for our preacher this morning, Jayla Jackson from my hometown, Atlanta, Georgia, but she, um, her connection to us is through parishioner Andy Pringle. Jayla, thank you so much for being here with us this morning. Yes, I'm so glad to be here. Um, I want to give a huge shout out to Miss Hitchcock and Miss Andy, who were the you know reason why I'm here um, currently. As she said, my name is Jayla Jackson. I'm 16 years old. Um, and again, let me just assert how thankful I am for this opportunity. Any space where I get to talk about my faith and my spiritual journey, I always take advantage of it. Um, I will ask that you guys excuse that I'm in the car. I'm currently on set for a movie, which is really, really exciting. Um, and I know that Ms. Hitchcock gave a little bit of a bio of me, but to just talk a little bit about who I am. Um, I am most famously known for being one half of the first Black girl duo to ever win Harvard's international debate competition. I have been Team Vogue's top 21, under 21, CBS, I've been on CBS, ABC, Good Morning America. I mean, the list just goes on with all the blessings I've been able to receive. Um, but this segues into my spiritual journey. Everywhere I go, I always talk about the power of God and how the only reason that I'm in the spaces that I'm in or in the spaces that I'm going to be in is through my relationship with God. And I know that he's fighting for me and he's in battles for me that I would never know about. And that's so powerful to me. My parents are both Christians and they grew up in the church. Um, I did not grow up in the church um, and my parents did not force Christianity on me. And that allowed me the space to learn who God is for myself. They always gave access to him and they were there to talk about him. They taught me about who God was, but I created the relationship that I have with God and that has allowed me to do so much. And so I won't waste time, you know, I'll get um, right into it. So my start in activism came from poetry. And for inspiration, I call on poetry a lot to help me find approach. And so I wanna call on a poem by Sonia Sanchez, one of my favorite poets. She says, where is your fire? I say, where is your fire? You gotta find it and pass it on. Where is your fire? I say, where is your fire? Can't you smell it coming out of our past? And in honor of MLK, I will say the fire of blackness. Where is the beautiful fire that gave light to the world? In my work as an activist, I have found myself sad many times, trying to figure out what to say to a group of people who are tired, who are burnt out from being burned. Nine times out of 10, you are talking to people who are constantly fighting for the rights of others. 
The years 2020 and 2021 were the closest display to the largest showcase of effective activism in history almost. The Voting Rights Act, the eradication of segregation in schools, the deconstruction of separate but equal, police reform, and the civil rights period as a whole. Thousands joined fighting for one thing, one dream specifically. Generations who all understood that the only American dream, the only way to have it, is to first achieve Martin Luther King's dream. It is not hard to say that people are exhausted, right? We are so tired of the diversity conf conferences and we're tired of turning on the news or cutting on the phone and seeing you know, so much hate, so much um, dehumanization. Um, but when we read our history books and turn to the three pages they dedicate to Black history, it can seem a little repetitive. You know, people are so tired of hearing the Trump, uh, tree stump speeches and most have resulted in living in false realities. And I knew this experience well um, when this summer I sat conflicted trying to piece words together. This is actually where I got to encounter Miss Andy. I remember when a friend of mine reached out about being a student representative for the march. She explained that the marches were centered around voter suppression and I'm a debater. So immediately I researched and I found myself in this historical time capsule. I was taken back to 1789, the origin of voter suppression. And I found myself digging deep, drowning in the subtleties of democracy that allowed for that type of injustice, the clauses and the subsections, the policy whose lines were bars with us behind them. And after submerging myself, I came up from all of that expecting to feel rejuvenated. And instead I felt dissatisfied and sad that even though I was writing my voting rights speech on a map book, myself and MLK were saying the same thing. I couldn't understand how the organizers were so eager and how the leaders weren't burned out. How long could we scream before we turn to white noise? But despite the aching, I pieced my words together and pondered, what do you say to a group of people who have heard so many excuses and lies, who are tired of fighting for what should be a basic human right, who look back to those who originated all of this and apologize for the nostalgia? What do you say to those who are still here fighting, who never left, who held movements on their backs for us to organize in safety? And then I realized that is the plight of a change maker, the disappointment and the repetition, the failure, the rebound. And it sagged on me when I got out the car and when I got to the speaker check-in, the issue was heavy, but my spirit was heavier. And before I give any speech, I pray. I prayed, I asked that God gave me the words. I asked that he gave me the strength to make it through that day. I had to tap in to my spiritual, internal or I wasn't going to make it and when I hit that stage and saw the electricity that ran through the crowd seeing the field of energy that tethered everyone to one station there's only one thing I know that has the power to do that that yes those people were tired but they weren't done they understood that they couldn't be done when there was more work to be done so I took a deep breath and again asked God to give me the words and let those words cover the crowd and confirmation that the odds weren't in our favor. We didn't have the track record or the frequency, but we had faith, the bright burning fire of faith. And I knew that we were onto something because somewhere I read of Exodus three, verse two through four, that the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that through the bush was on, though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought I will go over and see this strange sight. Why does the bush not burn up? When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. That God revealed himself through the everlasting flames of faith. For us at that time, all we needed is to let them know that they would not put us out, that this wasn't over, and that this wasn't about where we were, but about where we were going, because that's the only thing we can control. It wasn't just a mo moment, but it was a movement that it wasn't over till we said it was over. But even in all that, it wasn't until I got home that I realized the true power of what we did. I mean, cities across the nation, thousands of people, media, young people and millennials, seniors. And as we would say where I'm from, everybody and their mama was out there. We reclaimed the streets and wrote our names on our cities. We showed the world what it really means to be a citizen to be an active user of faith that when they said we couldn't do it, or looked down from their seats with the shadow of doubt, we winked because we knew something they didn't. 
that we were part of an election greater than our government, that we cast the vote to break the silence and truly let freedom ring. Activism has famed my flame of faith. It lights the path to the promised land. It's called that because it was the promise given to Abraham and his people. He didn't promise them a chunk of land. He promised them peace and prosperity and hope. In King's famous mountaintop speech, he says something so powerful. He says, well, I don't know what will happen now. We've got some difficult days ahead, but it really doesn't matter with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. And I know tonight that we, as a people, we will get to the promised land. And if I do anything else, I'm here to let y'all know that I've seen the promised land. I've seen glimpses of it. The flames of the movement have allowed me to see the path to the promised land is bright and burning. Can't you smell it? Coming out of our past, the fire of sit-ins and marches, the fire of Nat Turner and Garvey and Du Bois and Fannie Lou Hammer and Martin and Malcolm and Mandela. Can't you smell it? Sparking in our presence, the fire of St. Luke's Episcopal Church of Jayla Jackson, of Andy, and of Jessica, of family, of friends, of neighbors, and brethren. Where is your fire? Now I ask you, where is your fire, your flame of faith? You gotta find it and pass it on. Where is your fire? I say, where is your fire? Ask your kids, your neighbors, friends, and family, where is your fire? King is most famously known for having a dream. And that dream hasn't changed, though its oppositions have. So what do you say to a group of people like that? You say, dream on. You say, take me to the future and to the past and give me the gift of the present. Take me to world peace and bring me back. Light my wildest dreams of flame so that I may carry the torch. Where is your fire? Learn the fire and be the fire. Light flames and dream a dream of diversity and equity so bright and loud that it rings from every village and every hamlet, that every state and every city. Let it ring so we will be able to speed up today that with the day that with all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, we will be able to join hands and sing the words of the old Negro spiritual. And as King said, free at last, free at last. Thank God almighty, we are free at last. I ask you to remember and find your flame of faith, learn your faith, be the faith. Light, the, light your faith aflame so much that it burns, not only for you to see, but for everybody around you to see the effervescent light of what God can do. Something so powerful that it transcends hate, that it transcends dehumanization, that it transcends history and it creates our future. I ask you to light a flame, not only for yourself, but for everyone around you and everyone to come after you. Thank y'all so much for having me. And I hope that, you know, my words could resonate. And again, thank you for this opportunity. It means the world to me. Thank you, Jayla, so much for being with us this morning and for sharing those words and for um, lighting the fire and fanning the flames in each of our hearts. Thank you so much. Dear people of God, our history is marred by oppression, by the enslavement of those who differ from us, and by the forces of racism that attack human dignity. The sin of racism is woven into our lives and our cultures in small and great ways, in things done and left undone. As followers of Christ, we reject racism and the oppression of other human beings. In building Christ's beloved community, we must strive to love all people, respect all people, and work for the good of all people. We must stand alongside God's children of every race, language, and culture, and work together as agents of justice, peace, and reconciliation. In the assurance of our forgiveness, let us kneel before God and humbly confess our sins, our participation in racism, our privileges based on racism, and our perpetuation of racism. God, the creator, you freed your people from slavery in Egypt, yet the legacy of slavery deforms our lives today. Have mercy on us. God, the son, you prayed that all would be united in your love and service, yet the divisions among us rend your body. Have mercy on us. God, the Holy Spirit, 
you inspire us to live peaceably with all, yet the stain of genocide and internment mars our striving for justice. Have mercy on us. We have harmed one another and the earth through negligence, greed, and self-interest. Have mercy on us. We have failed to condemn discrimination that leads to unrest. Have mercy on us. We have decried violence while overlooking iniquity and frustration from which it rises. Have mercy on us. We have practiced injustice for economic gain and have oppressed others to make a false peace. Have mercy on us. We have sought comfort and advantage for ourselves at the cost of injustice for others. Have mercy on us. We have welcomed solace over conflict and ignores, ignored the cries of those harmed by our comfort. Have mercy on us. We have grasped for this world's goods and been arrogant towards those who have little. Have mercy on us. We have not shared the good things we have been given and blamed the poor for their poverty. Have mercy on us. We have been fearful and distrustful of those who are different from us. Have mercy on us. We have divided ourselves from others and refused to listen to or believe their experience. Have mercy on us. We have been indifferent to the pain and suffering of our siblings. Have mercy on us. We have held in contempt those who need our help and not love them with our whole hearts. Have mercy on us. We have been self-satisfied in our privilege and denied our oppression of others. Have mercy on us. We have preferred order over justice and isolation over the struggle for peace. Have mercy on us. We have quietly held good intentions and kept silence the message of reconciliation. Have mercy on us. We have failed to act with courage for the sake of love. Have mercy on us. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in <clears throat> eternal life. Amen. Amen. A statement of faith. We refuse to believe that we are unable to influence the events which surround us. We refuse to believe that we are so bound to racism and war that peace, brotherhood and sisterhood are not possible. We believe there is an urgent need for people to overcome oppression and violence without resorting to violence and oppression. We believe that we need to discover a way to live together in peace, a way which rejects revenge, aggression, and retaliation. The foundation of this way is love. We believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final word in reality. We believe that right temporarily defeated is stronger than evil triumphant. We believe that peoples everywhere can have three meals a day for their bodies, education and culture for their minds, and dignity, equality, and freedom for their spirits. We believe that what self-centered people have torn down, other centered people can build up. By the goodness of God at work within people, we believe that brokenness can be healed. And the lion and the lamb shall lie down together and everyone will sit under their own vine and fig tree and none shall be afraid. I invite you to share God's peace with those that might be sitting with you or those that are within shouting distance. You can text God's peace or just send God's peace from your heart to somebody else's heart who might need an extra helping of God's peace. The peace of Christ be always with you.
Please join me in saying this invitation to communion. You'll remain muted, but it is a good practice to go ahead and say these words out loud. Merciful God, we entrust to your tender care those who are ill or in pain, especially my Broly, Roger Han, Fred Hinken, Wally Rashe, and Sue Williams, knowing that wherever danger threatens, your everlasting arms are there to hold them safe. Comfort and heal them and restore them to heal and strength through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Gracious God, give skill, sympathy, and resilience to all who are caring for the sick, wisdom to those who continue searching for treatments, and clarity of mind to those whose decisions affect public health. Strengthen them with your spirit that through their work, our communities will be restored to health through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. We give thanks for the release of the hostages from Beth Israel, but we acknowledge fear, anger, and grief remain. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. 
that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. Because in Jesus Christ, you established your reign of righteousness and peace, giving us partnership in its manifestation and hope for its fulfillment. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy God, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. For in these last days, you sent Jesus to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Christ, you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Christ, you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died, our Savior, Jesus Christ, took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Jesus took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ was born. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And we offer our praise and thanksgiving to you, O Savior of all presenting to you from your creation this bread. We give thanks that you have sent your Holy Spirit on these gifts so that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ. Unite us in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ through whom we are acceptable to you being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. And in the fullness of time, gather all things under the just reign of Christ and bring us to that heavenly country where with Luke and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory if you have a wafer please receive it at this time the body of christ the bread of heaven
Eternal God, we thank you that in Christ you give yourself into our hands. May we who have tasted life proclaim the coming feast when many will come from east to west, from north and south, to greet the Lord of all. We ask this in his name. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of the one holy and undivided Trinity be with you and those you pray for now and always. Amen. I invite you. I have some announcements to share with you after small group, so I hope you'll stick around. But 